Good morning. Today on the Family Dining Table Project, we're going to be working on sequencing our boards. We will go ahead and mark them. We'll measure everything and uh, do some more marking. And then we're going to cut them to length. The first order of business is to decide which order these boards are going to go in. There are a few things that need to be considered. One being that I'm going to cut off 15 inches of each board, seven and a half inches each end, or five inches on one end, or, and 10 inches on the other end. Uh, part of the reason for that being just the length that I want uh, the overall table or the end result to be. The other part about that is is somewhat built in because knowing that there are some knots uh, on the ends, there are some cracks that I want to be able to cut out. And the other thing that I want to consider is that I don't want to have any knots. Uh, where's an example? Here's an example up here. I don't want to have any knots in the first couple of inches of my boards because I'm going to be cutting uh, tenons in the ends of my boards. So I've already fairly well got it laid out. One thing that I found funny, this is entirely coincidental right here that this and that match up and, and look like they're the same thing. These two boards, I don't even know if you can see it in the uh, video here. There we go. These two boards, they're not even the same color. It's not as though they came from the same spot. But at the same place on each board, that actually matches up. The knot patterns don't even match as though it was split from the same spot. Anyhow, so I fairly well got it in order. And now what I need to do is decide what I need to cut off of where. The first thing that I see that needs to be cut out is right here. For one, I've got a couple of knots that I don't want to be cutting into to, to make my tenon. And here, this is going to be the edge of the edge of the dining table. And as little as possible as much as possible I suppose I don't want to have you know ugly stuff like that at right at the very edge of the table so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this here and what's going on here something uneven. something that appears to be unsquare all right so I'm gonna mark that one and since these two boards are the two that have that weird knot further up there that actually matches up, I'm going to cut the other one. I'm going to cut them both at the same length to keep that knot uh, in the same spot. All right, so something that I almost just succumbed to is the how easy it is to expect that something that you buy as an 8-foot board is exactly 8 foot long, 96 inches. Well, I'm going to go ahead and assume, since I just thought about that, I'm going to go ahead and assume that they're not all perfectly 96 inches. This one's 96 inches plus about an eighth. The next one looks to be even longer. So what I'm going to do when I mark these is I'm going to mark just for the overall ultimate length that I want, which is 81 inches. So the best way I can think of to do that is I'm going to go ahead and mark, set that at 10. There we go. And now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to mark at 91 inches I'll go ahead and rinse and repeat that process for the rest of them cutting out the bad stuff and keeping the good and now for this last one I'm gonna mark it right about here and follow it down there one thing that I want to point out I was about to mark it here um, and I was thinking about it one of the things that often will happen is if you're if you're trying to cut out a knot, make sure you look underneath to see which direction that that knot goes. 
it's not really the case in this one but a lot of times that knot will be at a at a really strong angle so if you cut it off here on the underside your knot may continue even further uh, down the road. Alright now before much else I want to adhere to that old adage make it twice, cut once make sure that all of my boards are marked at 81 inches seems simple Incredible how easily that's overlooked. I went back to measuring with my 91 inch method just because the end of my tape measure is a little bent up and I discovered something that's pretty important to point out. When you're dealing with something wide like this, this is uh, these are two by ten, so they're nine and what nine and a half inches wide or nine and a quarter wide. Um, you want to measure both sides to make sure that your mark is square. So check this out. Right here, I've got it sitting dead on 91. We'll move down here, and it's at the 10 inch mark. But on the other side of that very same board, marked with the very same square that is square, I checked it with the straight edge, actually a couple of straight edges, 91 inches, and look how far that one is off. So what that tells me is that one of the surfaces that I marked my square from is off. Uh, so I need to figure out which one it is and do some remarking. Now with that all sorted out, I'm going to flip them all over. I'm going to mark in order, since now I've got them all sorted out where they need to be, I don't want to get them out of order and have to resort all of that. Now that's a fine question. Why did I just mark five when there are only four boards? And why am I marking the other end of them anyhow? The simple answer is so that when my end piece has all the mortises cut in it, I don't mix up this end with the other end because they're going to be cut pretty, uh, pretty uniquely, meaning that one's not likely going to fit the other end. And now it's time to cut them to length and I've never been much good at cutting a straight line with a saw so the best way I've figured is to mark all sides of it and then cut a little bit and check and cut a little bit and check so there I've cut a little bit and it's perfectly you see it there oh come on focus there we go perfectly right on the line there and right on the line there as well way if I start straying off of the line I can put a little bit of pressure if I'm if I'm cutting too far this way I can just twist a little bit with my saw as I'm sawing and it'll work its way back in there or likewise if I'm if I'm cocked off to one side or the other I can just start slowly correcting that it won't correct instantly but it will work its way back to where it needs to go Here's on what was the back side of that cut. You can see that it stayed nice and true all the way until about there. And my saw started to kind of wander off the line a little bit. And now that's not a huge gap. There's my thumb for scale. It's a little gap. But I need that to be true because I'm pulling uh, measurements next off of this line. So I'll go ahead and clean that up with the uh, plane. I think 
that'll do. Well, now all my boards are cut, and this feels like a pretty good stopping spot, lest this video run into 20, 25 minutes long. Tune in next time, because on the next installation, at the very, very least, we're going to go ahead and plane all the edges of the boards. So then instead of having a little valley where the boards meet, you instead have a nice, even joint where you can barely tell where one ends and the next begins. But that's next time. So, again, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. I hope this is entertaining. If so, please click the thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe. I don't know. I always do this. Uh, why don't I even point? You know where the subscribe button is. Go ahead and subscribe. Um, and, uh, and above all, if you like it, if you enjoy it, if you have a friend that would enjoy it, please share it with a friend, whether that be directly or on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.